celebrating International Interpretation Day is understanding the impact interpreters have on communication and cultural mediation. Joining us now with more is founder and CEO of To Ascend, Corey Axelrod, and interpreter Michael Albert. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Let's well, thank you for having me today. There is so, everyone sees interpreters uh, whenever they're watching television, but there's so many things that we don't know about the industry, about the needs. Tell us something that people really need to understand. That's a great question. When I think about interpreters, really, interpreters aren't only for deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing people. They're really here for everybody to be able to access communication with one another. The interpreter's role is to break down communication barriers, and this is for all individuals involved in any communication, not just the deaf, 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 blind, and hard of hearing people. Without interpreters, how can communication happen? For example, this interview right now, if the two of you knew sign language, then we wouldn't even need an interpreter here. And again, we, us, we, you know, it's all of us involved in the communication, and interpreters are here for all of us. And also, as an interpreter, you also need to be able to understand the meaning that the person is trying to convey, because it's not just through the actual sign language, it's body language, it's a lot of other things that go into communicating. Yes, there's so many different qualities. Really, misunderstandings don't come through the sign. They really come through the many different nuances of language. And it's an amazing language. It has so many different aspects. The full character of linguistics, often people think, oh, ASL is English in signs or on the hands. But it's really so much more than that. When you think of the complexities involved with American Sign Language, the facial expressions, body language, the signs, the grammar, everything is incorporated into this one complete language. Do you feel like during COVID, more people were able to understand really the importance of having interpreters as part of the global conversation? Yes, and when I think back to my time at the Illinois Association of the Deaf, when I was president of that organization for six years, during the time that COVID hit, we were constantly communing with the governor's office, communicating with them to make sure that our Illinois deaf, hard of hearing, and deafblind communities had access to all of the information. But that required us to really advocate with them to make sure that they were changing what was happening because the interpreters might be on TV, but then they would focus in on the speaker. Mm. And we asked them, please, to the governor's office, we really need your response to us to make sure that we would have full access. And so we spearheaded the conversation about accessibility, and I'm happy to see that that change happened and came to fruition. Unfortunately, it, it required something like COVID to make something like this happen, but right. there you are. In playing a, a bit of devil's advocate here, some might argue with the uh, closed captioning, that that is a way of communicating. Do you find that that's sufficient or not? That's a great question. When I think about what happens often, you know, on social media, for example, oftentimes there's no captioning there. But now, for example, we're using picture-in-picture -picture interpretation today during this segment. Now, if this appears on social media and the captions are absent, we have the interpreter available. And there's really many different aspects of the deaf and hard of hearing community. Not everyone uses American Sign Language, and not everyone uses English. So you think about the percentage of people in, in the United States, there are so many people who are deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing. 1.5 to 2 million people. And many of those use sign as their primary language and their primary way of communicating, which leaves, you know, all these other people who may not have access. It's important for interpreters to be able to provide communication access for the 1.5 to 2 million people, but what about the remainder of the population as well we have to think about? So the goal is to go above and beyond, not just meet the minimum requirements of communication, but to make sure everyone has access to communication. Okay, we only have a couple seconds left, but if people want to get into this industry, what does it require? What's the training and certification? That's another great question. So for interpreters, if you'd like to become an interpreter, you definitely should know American Sign Language at a minimum and enter an interpreter training program, abbreviated ITP. 
that generally requires four years of training. And then when you graduate and you get your certification, but there's another important aspect of being an interpreter, and that involves cultural and linguistic immersion within the deaf and hard of hearing community. Mm -hmm. You don't just say, hey, I've become an interpreter, I've got my degree. It's not only that, but it's really a lifelong commitment to the deaf, deaf blind and hard of hearing communities and involvement with the, that culture. So a day like today really brings a great time to have a conversation about all of this and what people can do to be better and do better. Absolutely. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, the website, 2 uh, is on your screen for more information. You can find it there.